Hi, how are we doing? So, the, our last post was about the 5x5 five five theory uh, a couple of days ago. And just wanted to, I got, I got a few people kind of interested in the type of thing that I was putting over. So, just trying to explore the notion of, you know, just how much work can you do in, in a 30, 35 minute workout? And particularly if you've got the equipment available to you. So, if you're working in the gym somewhere else, if you, you know, if you're, uh, you're out at the local GA club or something like that. You know the, the type of stuff that you can do with just a few more bits of kit rather than just an Olympic bar like we did with a good old fashioned 5x5. Five five. So the idea here that we're going to explore today is working supersets, so the push and the pull. So most of your key or all of your key muscles work in opposing movements. So the biceps function is to curl, the triceps function is to extend. Uh, the same with the chest and back if you work in that push and pull theory. The chest is for press the lats are for pull. Um, so we're put, going to put that combination together into a little sequence where you can work very, very hard for half an hour, burn a huge amount of calories in half an hour and still get strong, just stay lean and all the positive things that we're going to look for working out in the gym. So here we go. Okay, so we're about to start our push and pull session. Before we do that, it's extremely important that this shoulder mass and that all the connective tissue around it is, is ready to go. It's warm. We've done a little pulse raiser on the bike. Um, you could do that very simply by loads of different ways. Skip if, if you've got no kit available to you. Uh, a good pulse raiser, but it needs to be followed by a really good stretch. An absolutely super tool is a broom handle. Um, again, low tech is the way to go. Start off with a full grip. Take a big breath in, lift your head, expand your chest, and then feel the stretch. And once you reach that point of where you feel you've got maximum stretch, you just pause for a second and let that muscle start to work and it starts to feel a little bit more elastic. Now, the one thing that I'm not doing as I roll over the top is releasing my grip. Once you've gone two, maybe three times over, I bring it in a small touch. Now, the range of motion will be slightly less, but I need to feel that point of maximum turn just there. And that's a, that's a big stretch for me being old and worn, so I just pause there for a second and then she'll release a little bit further. And I start to work that stretch. Uh, it's a great movement to do. If you have an elastic tube, that will also give you a tremendous amount of feedback as to where the state of your shoulders in terms of the flexibility and the warmth. You'll feel that extra stretch, you'll feel that little bit of pull, but a, but a broom handle is more than enough. Make sure your shoulders feel very pliable, you know, we've done before with a dumbbell, making sure the mechanics of the shoulder and that kind of nice fluid movement is readily available for working the dumbbells. So if nothing else, use a broom handle, big stretch, feel it, feel it, feel it, make sure you can get all the way over without releasing your small finger and work it two or three times and then you're ready for the bench, you're ready for the dumbbells and we're hot to go. So we're working this uh, concept of push and pull and in this clip we're going to talk about training chest and back as a pair. So our uh, sets and rep range is going to be five sets of six to eight reps. So hopefully as, as we go on we can increase the load, we can increase the weight that we're using. We don't particularly want to go into 10 to 12 reps, although if you are training more for condition rather than mass, then that would probably be your rep range, 10 to 12 reps. <coughs> Keeping it as simple as we possibly can because I do appreciate that different gyms have different bits of kit. You may be training at home, uh, you might be just training down at your local fitness centre which has very limited equipment. But virtually every gym I've, I've certainly trained in has some version of a lat pull down machine. It might be a cable attachment but it's the movement that's relevant. Um, and a simple bench and some dumbbells. That's, that's really all we need to put a nice plan together. We're going to work the angle of the bench. So we're going to come down into our body first of all, then we're going to come on a more lateral angle, horizontal angle should I say, um, and then we're going to come off the floor into our body, so we're working top to bottom. You can obviously reverse that process if you want and mix it up a small bit if, if you need to do that too. So I, I would class this as a high incline dumbbell press with just over a 45 degree slope on the bench and we're going to slowly work back down to the flat. So our first move, I incline on the press, superset with seated lat pull down from here. Start at the top of the move and stabilize the dumbbell, bringing them slightly together at the top. 
Think almost of a letter A. Wide base, narrow top, nice slow tempo. For six to eight reps, we want the tempo to be smooth. And I'm just bringing that taper in at the bottom just so I can stabilize the weight over my bicep so I'm not out too wide. I don't want to potentially risk injury in my shoulder. Bring it in. And away we go. So straight onto that pull down. A couple of positional mistakes that people make is the number one would be to have your feet too far forward. And as you make the pull, if you start to struggle, your spine will bend, compromising your strength. Um, but also is the desire to want to whip your body backwards and you know be more interested in how heavy it is than the quality of the movement. So a little tip. Put your feet underneath your hips, let your pelvis be rotated slightly forward, and really straighten your back. Once you're in position, slow contraction, enjoy the stretch, slow contraction, enjoy the stretch. And minimize the amount of movement in your torso. So rather than pulling here with no benefit at all, keep it in your back. So again, we're trying to get that expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. So high incline dumbbell press, lat pull down, five by six to eight reps. Mess around with the weight, and really make that six to eight reps as productive as you possibly can. Slow tempo, but heavy enough. Okay, part two in the sequence, we've done the, the high angle, now we're going to work the low angle on the bench. We're going to change the move for the back exercise, or the lat exercise. From here, low incline dumbbell press. Now, I'm using the same weight just for the demonstration, but what you really should be looking to do is now go heavier. Um, and at a flatter position, you can recruit more chest wall. So from here, you can slow it right down and use as much chest muscle as you have available and really go slow try and get the depth as the weight's really coming down into your body bring that dumbbell right to the side of your chest again common mistakes just half a rep not closing enough at the top and really creating as much movement as you possibly can now if you really want to work strict try and work a tempo of four down and a smooth one out so one two Three, four, pause, feel the stretch, and a slow one on the way out. So nice and smooth and slow. Okay? Now I can feel that much more centralized from a weight point of view. So the high incline dumbbell press is targeting here, and we're slowly bringing that roll around the chest wall towards the bottom. Now the back exercise, again, altering the angle of the bench. Now we're going to use the bench as a platform to train lats. Now the one arm dumbbell row, I prefer to stand and hold the weight. I like the increased load it puts in my core. I like the sprint position to work from. And I'm really going to try and maximize as much of my body as I possibly can, but still isolating the back. Now if you're going heavier, I would always suggest using bar straps rather than over time starting to compromise your grip. If you train hard enough for long enough, sometimes a problem that can be created from a grip point of view is the, 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 the onset of carpal tunnel damage. So by using a bar strap, the load is in the back of the wrist and in the forearm, rather than particularly in your grip. So here, I wrap around the handle, roll the dumbbell into position. Now there's absolutely no way I can drop that dumbbell unless I open my hand. So now I can concentrate on my form. So from here, nice deep stance, set the angle of my back, and I roll slow and strong into position. Now still, you'll see loads of guys swashing away here. You need to feel the contraction in that position there. So I'm trying to roll my elbow around my back, and I'm trying to create that flex of muscle around my spine. So stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. Okay? If you're not confident to do it standing, 
then again, use the bench to create that angle in your back. So again, roll your pelvis, flatten your back, put your, your uh, same knee, same hand, make sure you've loads of space here to roll that dumbbell into position, and I'm after that contraction at the back of the move. So from here, I hold the dumbbell at the top, and it drape in my wrist to create the angle, which pretty much parallels your spine. Roll and squeeze. Roll and squeeze. Roll and squeeze. So again, working the same theory, five sets, six to eight reps, nice and heavy. But if you feel that you are really smashing the technique, then you need to go lighter and slow down. Better productive end and less potential for risk. So that's number two. Okay, so part three of this push and pull concept. Now we're going a little bit heavier. I'm going to show you two techniques on the flat bench dumbbell press. So it, it, it is kind of a standard chest move. Um, again, sometimes people go too heavy too soon and forget technique, forget tempo, risk injury. When you're on the flat and you're going heavy, there's a lot of potential for the front delt muscle uh, and the, kind of the connective tissue around the shoulder which is a stabilizing area for the move uh, to be damaged. So slow, smooth, deep and full is far better than super heavy, bounce, 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 and end up tearing the muscle. So from here, using both hands together, the common kind of version of the flat dumbbell press. Again, I lift my head slightly so I know my shoulders are into the bench and I'm not gonna to put too much pressure on the back of my head. From here, slow tempo in, nice wide base. Work that angle. You can go super slow. One, two, three, four. Feel the stretch. Feel the squeeze. Or you can just get a real good pump on with a nice steady tempo. Okay, an alternative, which we see with a lot of sports people, pitch basic players, rugby players, etc., is the one arm dumbbell press. Some guys use it with literally one dumbbell and the other, the other hand is out to the side. I prefer to keep the upright dumbbell working away nicely in the shoulder, having to stabilize it, having to balance. There's a lot of emphasis on the core so you don't fall off the bench when you're working away nice and smooth. And there we go. On the one arm dumbbell press, you'd be Quite surprised just how weight you can, how much weight you can move. I have a number of guys that are incredibly strong at the one-arm dumbbell press. Guys that play rugby, etc., and they're looking for that power connection all the way through one side. They're doing wraparound tackles, etc. So it's you know it's a very useful method if you're just looking for the symmetry and the mass of the chest. They work both hands together, and it's very productive. The pair this time to go with it, working two hands. We've done the one-arm dumbbell row heavy. Now we're going to do the bent forward dumbbell row in this position, nice flat back, two dumbbells and we're going to squeeze hard, again working that symmetrical movement left and right around the body. So from here, again, hold the dumbbell not in the centre but at the top, so when it drapes in your wrist it parallels the position of your spine, <clears throat> a natural foot position, rotate your pelvis, nice flat back. And the dumbbell's going to follow the outside line of the thigh. So roll and squeeze. From the side. The same technique. Head up. Nice flat back. Really pull that contraction in tight. So. We're doing four combinations of push and pull. That's combination three, flat, flat dumbbell press, either together or one arm, and double dumbbell bent forward that row. Here we go. Okay, so the final element in our four exercise split or pairing uh, flat flies for the width, but also the depth of our chest. So I want to show you two methods of fly. One puts a lot of pressure really out wide, so it's a huge curve. 
The other, really for the, for the depth of the chest, is a slightly different variation on technique, but you'll see how we can dramatically handle a lot more weight. So from here, a standard flat fly, get my angle, get my body in the right position, shoulders back into the bench, head slightly raised. From here, shower breath in, and I try and create as big a curve as I possibly can, and a slow squeeze. So I work away at a nice smooth tempo, trying not to alter the angle in my wrist, and away we go. So I can perform sets and reps quite happy with that particular weight. But if I want to apply a little bit more load, or double the load in fact, and get a little bit more contraction at the centre of the chest wall, I go double the weight. But this time it's a completely different movement with a, 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 you know, quite a dramatically different effect. From here, same start point, this time I keep my wrist over my elbow, form like a, almost like a W shape, and I contract hard at the top. Deep breath in, squeeze, one, two, three, four, stretch, contract. And I'm, I am physically trying to close my chest wall as tight as I can at the top. Both techniques are very valid. If it was me, I'd do two sets of one, two sets of the other, and then go a little bit heavier for the last one on the close grip and kind of mix it up that way. The very last technique is the cross bench dumbbell pullover. Now, the dumbbell is going to be end on and it's going to be above your face. So, safety tip make sure that that dumbbell is really tight and have confidence that it's locked on as tight as you can possibly get it. Get the Allen keys on it and just double check, double check, and always double check. So from here, I put my shoulders on the bench, I'm teed off at 90 degrees, and the biggest mistake people make is they bridge flat. When you want your pelvis low, lower than your shoulders, to maximise the stretch effect. Now we're going to stretch the lats, we're also going to stretch the chest, so it's a superb exercise to finish on or to warm up on. From here, a palms up grip wrapped around the dumbbell and I fully extend to engage my chest. Big breath in. And a big long stretch. And I'm just subtly altering the angle of my grip to keep my palms parallel to the floor all the way through the move. So the dumbbell always hangs vertical. Contract your chest wall at the top, big lat stretch, and then push through at the top. So there you have it, push and pull, four simple pairings, working from the top of the body to then coming in deep. And we've, we've, uh, when we did the, the double dumbbell lat row, we've come off the floor into our torso, so you hit a huge amount of muscle mass and we finished with a fantastic stretch just to really loosen it all off and make it a, almost a very elastic movement. So, just for the bench, just for some dumbbells, and the only other piece of kit is the lat pull down. You have a serious workout, working five to six sets, six to eight reps, and you could put all that together, nice and pacey, good tempo, 35, 40 minutes, great workout done. Have a go at it.